Hey sweet friends and welcome back to my channel. I've been gone a while. My other camera went kaput. So I didn't have a camera and I want to apologize in advance for the quality of this video. Um, this is an old camera that I'm using and it's just not good. But it's all I have right now. Um, I want to talk today about daddies. Um, as we all know, Sunday is Father's Day and I just kind of wanted to come on and, and talk about dads in general and kind of share the story of me and my dad with you. Um, you know, it, it, it seems really cliche to say, you know, it, you, I'm sure you've all heard, it, you know, anybody can be a father but it takes a special person to be a daddy. There is a lot of truth in that. Um, so with that being said, in honor of my dad and memory of him, um, in honor of Father's Day, I'm going to go ahead and tell you the story of me and my dad. Now, if you're offended by emotion or um, gushiness, you might want to click out now. Um, I can't imagine why you would be, but whenever I talk about my daddy, I get emotional. So, um, I just thought I'd share my story, so here we go. When I was two years old, my biological father and my mom got divorced. Um, one Sunday afternoon, my dad had come to get me for the weekend, or my father had come to get me for the weekend. And when he dropped me off, he left me on my grandparents' doorstep with a bag of M&Ms. He kissed me on the forehead said he'd be back for me the next weekend. I'm still waiting. That weekend never came. Um, I did not actually meet my father until I was 21 years old. But going back to the original plot, um, he never came back never heard from him, never got a birthday card, Christmas card, nothing. Just, he walked out of my life. Me being that age, didn't understand, I probably didn't even think about it. But, um, fast forward, two or three years later, I think it was three years later, my mom met a man. She fell in love with him, and they got married. This man, my stepdad, is the man that I call daddy. Um, I don't even call him stepdad. Um, he did end up adopting me and giving me his last name. Um, he, he taught me so much in my life. I told you I would get like this. He taught me so much. He taught me how a husband is supposed to treat a wife. He taught me what a real daddy was like. And I thank God for him every day. Because he'd always been there for me. Um, and growing up, I'm sorry. Growing up, I wasn't always the best kid. I was a wild child. Um, he had two daughters from a previous marriage, and then he and my mom had, um, my brother. Um, you know, he always treated me with respect. He disciplined me, and he needed to, but out of the, out of the four children, I was the one that was always in trouble. I was the one that caused so much trouble. I was just horrible as a kid. Um, but he stuck, he stuck right there with me through it all. Taught me lesson after lesson. Fanned my tail a couple of times. A few, couple. Quite a few times. You know, he, and growing up, I never understood it. I always thought that he picked on me because I was not his biological child, which now that I've grown up and, and looked back on it, that was totally not the case. 
he did it because he loved me. Um, now, in 2008, I think, yeah, my dad was diagnosed with bladder cancer. Um, and ended up having to have his bladder removed which meant he had to wear a colostomy bag. Um, so in order to help take care of my dad, I learned how to do it, how to you know change out the bag and, and stuff like that. And I would go two or three times a week to his house and do that. Um, I always tried to uh, be there for my dad the way he was for me. Um, and I've just made up my mind, I'm going to be there for my dad. I'm sorry. Because he was always there for me. So, after, I guess about a year of him being on the bag, um, the cancer had spread. So he ended up having to get both um, of his kidneys removed, which meant he had to be on dialysis three, two or three times a week, um, and that was very hard. It was very hard to see, and I'm sure of you, I'm sure some of you know what I'm talking about that have been through this. Um, it was very hard to see him go from, you know, a, a 200 pound ball of energy and ball of life and jokes and just a wonderful, wonderful man to a 97 pound, frail, quiet, meek man. That was very hard. That wasn't my dad. But I tried really hard to stick it out. I tried not to cry in front of him. But it's very hard when you're not used to seeing your dad like this to you know, see him go down. Um, Fast forward to Christmas of 2011. Um, my husband built a wooden ramp um, outside of our house so that my daddy could come spend Christmas at my house. He was in a wheelchair at this point. Um, so daddy came to the house that Christmas. I think it was Christmas Eve, and um, he was sitting in, on the couch there by the little side table that had a little lamp on it. And we all knew, we all knew that it would be his last. And uh, my dad had made a comment to my mom that he couldn't wait till next Christmas because he would be with Jesus. And my mom had told me that. So that was in the back of my mind. <coughs> and I just sat there and I wondered what could have been going through his mind. Um, he, you know, he sat there. He was too weak to even open his presents. Um, he sat there with his eyes closed the whole night. And as he was sitting there, I was, the, the family was kind of talking or doing their thing and uh, I was just sitting on the other side of the, of the uh, other couch just staring at him. And uh, for whatever reason, the little lamp that was beside him on the table went out. And you know how your mind wonders, I remember thinking, that's God's way of telling me this is it. And uh, 
A few days later, he was admitted to the hospital. Um, he wasn't getting any better. Um, the cancer had spread. Um, he was hallucinating. Um, it, it was just a really, really rough time. And so I took every opportunity I could while he was coherent to tell him that I loved him. Um, sorry. Um, on June the 3rd, I'm, I'm sorry, January the 3rd, um, they told us that we needed to stop dialysis and it was time for him to go and uh, so they stopped the dialysis and um, he hung on my brother and I spent the night up there with him um, that night and I was across the hall in the waiting room and I wrote him a poem and I knew that it would be read at his funeral and I knew that uh, the end was here it was a waiting day now um, so the next day January the 4th there were tons of people up at the hospital off and on all day um, or all morning but the night before, when I was writing the poem for my dad, um, I was, you know, thinking about everything, and, and I realized I had not had any one-on-one -on -one time completely alone with my dad since he was in the hospital, and I wanted that time. There was a lot I wanted to say to him. Um, so I started to pray and I asked God to please just give me five minutes five minutes that's all I want just five minutes with my daddy alone so the next day about two o'clock everybody left all our friends, uh, my mom, my brother, everybody left to go eat lunch. And they expected me to go. But I had promised my dad that, I, that he would not die alone. So I wanted to keep that promise and uh, I didn't know because I you know you did, we didn't know when he was going to go and I didn't want to take a chance so um I stayed behind it was two o'clock sharp the moment everybody walked out and it was just he and I I went around the side of the bed and I got his chapstick and I started putting it on his lips at this time he was incoherent um, you know, just barely hanging on. And, um, I think I could, uh, it's, it's all kind of a blur, but I think I even combed his hair. And I went back to the other side of the bed, and I was holding his hand, and I, I remember taking a picture of our hands. I'll insert it right here. And, um, I remember reading the poem that I had written him. I read it to him. And I said, I love you so much, Daddy. Are you... I said, are you listening to me? And as soon as I said that, his head kind of turned toward me and he took his last breath. I looked at the clock and it was 2.05 exactly. I asked for five minutes and that's what it got. 
I wish now I'd ask for 30. <laughs> but um, God gave me that five minutes with my dad. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, when he took his last breath, everything just kind of went blurry for me. I do remember panicking um, and running out of the room and screaming for the nurse. I do remember that. And I do remember feeling that if I grabbed his feet and pulled him, he would come back for a few minutes. Uh, it's weird what you think when you're hysterical but I really thought I could do that so I was grabbing his feet and screaming and crying you know I knew he was gone but it, I guess it was just my way of coping but um <clears throat> I did get that five minutes and you know I'm, I'm I'm so thankful for that because all I can think is that I was holding my dad's left hand at the moment of death as God was taking his right hand. And that's a very, very heavy, powerful moment to be with someone when they leave this earth. And I'm so thankful for it. But um, I just thought I would share that story. I think it's a beautiful story. Um, and I want to encourage you, if your dad is not here anymore, if your dad is, has passed, it's okay to talk about to talk about them. Um, I've had a, a family well, family member in particular. I love to talk about my dad, but every time I do, and they're around, they say, don't talk about it. It upsets me. Okay, fine. But I just want you guys to know, it is okay. It is very healthy to talk about your loved ones that have passed. Just because they're gone doesn't mean your memory is. And, um, um, you know, you have to, you have to keep their memory alive. You have to, um, you know, they were here. They were living. They were a living, breathing person that walked this earth. And if you don't keep their memory alive, who's going to? I want the world to know that my daddy was here. Um, he was an amazing man. He really was. Um, so, on a brighter note, I hope you enjoyed the story. And, again, I'm sorry for bawling. But I'm just a very emotional, gushy kind of person. I'm infamous for it. Um, but happy Father's Day to all you dads. And I hope you really enjoy the day um, with your kids. Just have fun. Just spend the day with your kids and really take that in. Um, and kids, love your daddies. They're one of the most important people in your life. Um, even when you get older... I know when my dad passed away, I still needed him. I still needed him, even though I was... <clears throat> I'm not going to say. But um, I still needed my dad. I still need him today. But anyway, happy Father's Day. I hope you all have a wonderful day and make some great memories.